Today's video, it's all about these castings. I will be machining them and also pressure testing them. Now these castings were made from disc brake rotors. I noticed with the wedge test that they took a lot of blows to break. So what happened last time, one of these covers broke off when I pressure tested it. So it would be interesting to see exactly what will happen, if that will happen again, but at a higher pressure. But also, these two casting here, one was done with sawdust sand and the other one was done with coal dust sand. So I'd like to see the extensive machining involved with there to see exactly what they're both like and if I can compare them and see what they're like. This is the cover that failed under the pressure test and what I'll do, I'll give you a close look at it and put it in the comments, see what you think made it fail. I'm not really sure but we'll have a closer look at it. So I'll rotate it around and you can see where it cracked just there and it cracked just there. This is the cover that failed and this is where it's been flipped over so I'll rotate it again so you can have a look This is the cover that did not fail, still in one piece. What I'll do, we'll rotate it around and then we'll flip it over and you can see the other side. Alright, that's the second view of the cover, flipped over. This is the cylinder cover. I've cut the o-ring groove in, but it was a lot of trouble. I slowed down the lathe to the slowest speed in the chuck, and it still chattered like crazy. All the necessary holes have been drilled, so now I just have to tap the centre hole to put the grease nipple in. I've just finished putting the spot faces on, to the end caps, come out good. There's the crummy way I did it. I used the chuck. It's bad news, but the collet kept slipping all the time. So I had to resort to the keyless chuck. Both covers have been machined. I've put spot faces on. And we'll flip it over. Have a look, that one there. That one's coal dust. That one is sawdust. So they're both machined exactly the same way, there's no difference. And there are the O-rings to seal the end covers. This is the cylinder, it's all been machined up, bored out. Both flanges machined. And that is the fitting where I'll fit the gauge to. This is the setup. This time I've got a clamp so it doesn't dance around when I pump. And there is the grease gun just over there. Okay, so we're ready to go. For those people following along, the left hand figures, the black ones, are in bar and the red figures are in PSI. Here's the first part, this is 100 bar. Pressure seems to be holding. That's 200 bar. That's 300 bar. It's getting very hard to pump. So now we've got 400 bar.
So we've got up to 500 bar and wouldn't you know it, I'm starting to run out of grease. Yep, something just gave. Yep, just sprung a leak. Means something's failed. As you can see, in the bottom of the flange, it's leaking oil. Something's let go. Not sure whether it's the thread or the cap's cracked. Not sure what exactly is going on, but we'll have a look. Here is the gauge pressure. It is about 550 bar, which is about 8,000 psi. I did get it to just a slight more pressure, but the grease pump doesn't seem to want to go much higher than that. I was wondering why the pressure gauge was dropping very slowly. You just have a look just there. It's leaking out of the fitting that holds the pressure gauge in. Anyway, I haven't got any way of releasing the pressure so I'll leave that overnight and in the morning it should drop to almost to zero. And then we'll have another look at it. So here we are after the pressure test. It worked extremely well. I was pleased. What I was aiming for, these two covers, to see if they would break, like that one there, it never did. But when you've got really high pressure, I found out one thing very quickly there. If it will leak, it will leak. It first started leaking just here, where the grease nipple screws into the cover. And then I re-tightened that up, that stopped that leak. And then I went up to here, it started leaking just around in this thread. And what will happen there was I was just at the hardest pressure I could get with the grease pump. It wouldn't go much further than that. So I thought I'll stop anyway, wouldn't see much point in tightening that up. So, it worked really well there, but when you get to high pressure, you run into problems there. And if you want to seal up the leaks, you can go a bit further, but with my gauge, it's not much point. So we've got this one here. Why did this one break? Well, this one did not. I still don't know. Obviously this one was weaker than this one but it still broke. But anyway, with these disc brake rotors, they are very high tensile strength when you recast them, so that's why I use them for these two covers here, and it worked extremely well. So I can recommend, if you're going to use cast iron for a very high tensile strength, use disc brake rotors. This cast iron here is a very soft cast iron, it went up to uh, 450 bar where it broke. That's still a very high pressure. But if you want that just that bit more pressure or tensile strength, you want to go over to disc brake rotors. They work really well.